welcome to Extraordinary Stories with Extraordinary People. My name is Amy Kocek, and I am so thankful that you joined me today because I'm super excited. We're doing something a little bit different. Um, for, for about a year now, we've been highlighting the extraordinary stories of individuals and um, talking about pivotal moments in their life. And today, I have brothers on. I have two people on at the same time. And not only that, um, I have two business owners that are on and um, are going to share some pretty incredible things about their lives and about their business. Um, once again, I'm Amy Kocek with Amy Kocek Creative. The reason why I started Extraordinary Stories with Extraordinary People is because I believe the most powerful asset that we have is our stories. And a lot of times we feel alone in life or um, a lot of our issues stem from the thought of feeling like we are the only ones going through it. And if you are a business owner, you understand that loneliness can be even more real in that world because it is definitely an uphill climb. So um, I try to highlight people's stories because sometimes people just don't share them or for a variety of reasons. But I want my platform to be a place for people um, who may seem everyday people, but they are actually very extraordinary. And today is no different. I have David and Dwayne. Um, they are twins, but um, I have them on today, David and Dwayne Hogg. And I'm not going to talk about your business because I want you to be the one to intro it and um, tell us where it started. But before we do that, I want to know who you are individually. So let, I'll let you guys choose who goes first. But um, basic interview question, who are you? What do you do? What's some relevant information you want to share about your life? Definitely. So I'm, I'm Dwayne Hart, uh, second born, two minutes later as a twin, so I'll go first. Um, and as an individual, I'd like to think of myself as a leader, a motivator, and a creative. Um, so I aspire to help people, motivate people, and inspire people as the shirt that I'm wearing kind of says, if you can see it. And then I love coffee. So as we delve into the business a little bit more, that'll kind of see how those things connect for me. Yeah. David, you want to go? Yeah. So uh, I'm David Hogg, and I am a husband a father and a creative. Um, also, you know, like to think of myself as a leader and someone who looks for opportunities to step into places where there is not much representation um, and as a role model. So a uh, big part of, you know, I have a son, a seven year old son. So, you know, I'm a role model by default for him. But then also, you know, as I grow younger in my years, I see myself as a role, role model for those coming behind me. So um that's a little bit about me okay so before i ask the second question um you said grow younger in your years that's inter that's interesting what do you mean by that that you grow younger in your years <laughs> um so i think uh you know it it, it it was somewhat sarcastic because we don't really technically grow younger but um i'd like to think i'm as as i reached a certain point in life a lot of my thinking has reverted to how can I bring back that childlike, you know, imagination, childlike innocence, um, childlike hope, hopefulness and faith and optimism of the future. Uh, I was definitely a, a big dreamer as a child um, and thought I'd never let the reality of the world, you know, interrupt my dreams. And, you know, there was a, there was some time, obviously, where it started to happen. And uh, I'm just working on bringing that back. Yeah. Bringing that dreamer. Yeah, I love that. Okay, so speaking of dreams and creating and all the wonderful things that you guys do, let's talk about your business. And before you tell us what your business is and how you even came about it, tell us where you were at like before this came on the scene and what brought you to creating what you guys have created. Certainly. I'll let you take it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so we, um, we both work in corporate America, you know, nine to five drip jobs, um, you know, but we work in the marketing space, um, which, you know, for a while, for most of our career, which is, gives us that, you know, creative outlet, but in a more structured way. Um, and so this was really um, more and out of the uh, entrepreneurial spirit that, you know, was deep within us, um, that, that creative spirit that's deep within us, um, you know, so being able to have something that's owned and operated in that where you you have a lot of involvement in the fruits of your labor, you know, the ups and the downs and, and actually being able to take something from start to finish and produce a thing um, and some results was, you know, a big part of our underlying passion. And so 
this has given us an opportunity to do that um, on the side and, you know, just continue to fan the flames and hustle and try to make it a, a reality. So that's where I would say that's the, the, the underlying theme behind the business. Um, and then, you know, there's obviously the, the more specific tactical approach that we take. Yeah. So Dwayne, I'll ask you this. So um, when you guys were kind of figuring out, since both of you obviously have the entrepreneurial bone bones <laughs> in your body, um, how did you decide to narrow in on what you narrowed in on? And tell us what you narrowed in on. I'm like creating all this suspense. What did you narrow in on? What did you create? What is your business? Um, so we specialize in experimental coffee roasting. So it, uh, it started out with just simple passion for coffee, love for coffee. Um, a lot of people come to coffee in different ways. Me particularly, I came to coffee, you know, just as a means to get that kick, that energy. And I wasn't really drinking coffee. I was more so drinking hot chocolate or um, mostly milk and sugar. <laughs> and it, took, it, took a, it was a bit of a journey with that. It's long, so I won't go too deep into it for me to kind of understand and, and gain a taste, acquire a taste and, and appreciation for specialty coffee so but once i went that route and learned all the ins and outs of it it was just a passion for how do you develop that so you know that our business is coffee roasting but it's a little bit more it's unique it's disruptive because we experiment with barrel aging which is a process that is used widely among spirits and wines and beers um and we use that that same experimental model and that same process with coffee beans to bring together something more unique and creative. So um, it's kind of fueling a love and a passion for being creative and being um, change agents along with this love for the for coffee and everything that the coffee kind of culture and community is around. Yeah. So. Um, David, how would you say that the coffee that you, that you sell, how is it a, a more unique experience than if I go to like Starbucks or even another locally owned um, coffee shop in the area, what's the unique experience? Not only just with taste, but just um, the undertone of coffee itself, like the culture of coffee itself. How is it different? Yeah, definitely. So obviously, like you said, the uh, flavor profile is going to be a big unique differentiator. And then I, I would say, you know, another part of what we're looking to do is to is the, the way in which we share coffee with others. We spend a lot of time at um, local markets in the beginning of this business, you know, having the conversations with people and talking through, you know, brewing methods and explaining the, the process that went, went into creating the coffee. Um, but, you know, another big thing, you know, for us to infuse in, in what we do with coffee is to kind of, you know, as my brother mentioned, hear the, the ways people come to coffee and what they use coffee for because, I think coffee is very much, you know, it becomes a habitual thing, but it's a, it's a motivator. It's a, a fuel. Um, so, you know, we, you know, we try to pack that into you know, our overarching brand and, you know, how we, how we bring the coffee to people. Yeah. So um, I'm saying your name so that you guys don't have to figure out who has to talk. Uh, yeah. Dwayne. Um, so why, like, why coffee? Why wasn't it popcorn or you know, bread, like why, why is it coffee? coffee right? yeah. yeah. So, and this is probably my brother's story more so than mine, um, because he's the one who started out roasting on a, a stove top in his home. So, you know, went through the whole process of learning sights and sounds and smells and things like that with uh, how to develop a bean, a coffee bean and just exploring different types of origins. And, and kind of developing that passion for that final result, but also that process of how to actually create whole bean coffee. And so that's what kind of stuck with us. And, it, and, and the journey to this experimental model came from the fact that we wanted to do more than just create what was already out there. We wanted to you know, strike out, be different, be a little more creative, um, bring a little science to it and just, you know, a little bit of a uh, randomness to it to create something unique. So coffee stuck because of that, but like it could have been anything. Yeah. So based on like personalities, right. And maybe this is, this is a deeper question that goes beyond just the business, but just like, because you guys are twins, right. Yeah. Um, though you share a lot of similarities, let's just talk from like the business standpoint, 
David, what do you feel like you bring to the business that's unique? And then Dwayne, what do you feel like you bring to the business that's unique? And then how do those two qualities complement each other? Definitely, yeah. So I would say um, very much the, you know, oftentimes I'm, I'm, like I said, bringing that dreamer back. I'm the one thinking about um, sort of where we can be innovative, where we can take it next. Um, you know, a big thing early in our business model that I wanted to be a part of it, which is why we called ourselves experimental coffee roasters. Is I don't want to roast the same thing over and over and over again. There's a lot of great coffee roasters that perfect that and do that well. But, um, you know, it, it would take the fun out of it if there wasn't this little bit of risk and um, art and science to it. But um, from a business perspective, also thinking, like, how do we how do we do more with this platform um, and, and, you know, break into new channels? Um, so I would say that's, you know, sort of that uh, thought leadership and um, vision is what I bring to the table a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. Dwayne, what about you? Um, so, you know, it, it's, there's definitely some overlap, <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. but I'd say, um, I bring, I brought originally a, a kind of a outside perspective, um, and, and definitely more focused on the customer experience and, and, and tying that in because while my brother was the one doing a lot of the primary roasting and went through the primal stages of roasting. And then I came in once, um, he had acquired more commercial equipment and things were involved a little bit more. I had I had a love from coffee, so I was bringing in kind of an outside experience, and I like to drive that a little bit more through our brand. Um, I say I'm a little more involved with a lot of our interactive experiences, so on social media, um, even on the website and stuff. Um, it's usually me who's uh, you're talking to or you're who's responding and trying to be more active with that. So I'm I'm highly invested in the people. Um, and I'd say some of that customer experience is what I bring more to the table and that brand creativity. Definitely. Yeah, I love that. Um, so I want to talk about the, the building process of your business, right? Because you have this really phenomenal idea. You have something that you're bringing new to the market. Um, and I love the word experimental and doing things different. So obviously there's, there's an appeal what would you say when you first started building your business? What, if you could go back, what would you say was um, a really big hurdle that you had to get over, or a, something that you had to overcome, or a difficulty that you met when you were first starting your business? Um, I'd say uh, the whole cottage law thing, which is tough <laughs> for mm -hmm. a lot of people, um, because we wanted to we wanted to bring this to the masses. Um, pretty quickly and we got out there and we've been doing a lot of local markets and so navigating um, Florida's laws around cottage law and what was acceptable and what wasn't acceptable um, can be very tough and sometimes stressful for a, a startup business or entrepreneur who wants to get any type of product that can be consumed. Um, we fell in a little bit of a lucky gap with it being whole bean coffee that we were focused on and not something that we had to like create that could be eaten right away, but uh, it was still a bit challenging trying to go from that to how do we get this to people out of state? How do we get this, you know, shipped to people? You know, how can we bring bring this to the masses? So it was a bit of a hurdle, I'd say. Yeah. Like yeah. Um, David, as a, um, as a visionary, as a dreamer, what would you say in the, in the building process of your business, what would you say is like your greatest learning learning experience that you've had in this process? Um, I just think, I, I think every, you know, one, one big thing is that we, we really, you know, we're not as, we try to, we try and do a lot our, on our own. Um, and you, once you start to connect with people in the community and other business owners, we really learn that there are some, you know, awesome people in this community in St. Pete that, we're willing to help us out along the way. You know, we, we did some contract roasting with a couple of coffee roasters in Tampa and St. Pete that let us, you know, either, you know, helped us with some, augment some of our roasting or let us come in and use their space. And, you know, we had some folks that were willing to help us with commercial space and, you know, give us tips and tricks and show us the ropes along the way. And that was, you know, sort of, you know, not having been, you know, plugged into a, the business scene in that way here was, you know, uh, was a great surprise to come across and, you know, 
and it, it's really stuck with us in a way where we think, you know, although we're still, this thing's still burgeoning, we're still growing it, like we have to be cognizant of providing those opportunities to others. Like if we, we want to carry that spirit forward. So, yeah. and then we've actually tied it into a little bit of our business model too. Yeah. Explain that. Like the, is it like the idea of mentoring other up and coming businesses? So yeah, definitely being, being available and, and finding ways to provide resources, and then more directly, you know, we're 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 going to open this um, new space that we're working on right now as a shared grocery. So we're going to provide um, the, the equipment and the space for you know home roasters, uh, small roast, small batch roasters, micro roasters, any, um, anybody who wants to come in and learn more about roasting or do some roasting. Um, in addition to using us for roasting, but you know that was a that was a very unique challenge in starting a coffee roasting business. If you want to roast, it's all of the investment in equipment and, like my brother said, the laws and stuff. So you know we we've taken some of those steps, and so we want to be able to you know give back to others who are who are trying to get into that space. Yeah, um, using using the concept of being a um, being a black owned business for the sake of labels. Um, what would you say specific to being a black owned business are um, challenges that you face, but also opportunities that maybe you didn't realize that were there? Um, well, definitely uh, there's a lack of diversity in the, in the coffee community that mm -hmm. we entered in. Um, and, and we've learned as we've kind of connected with different coffee roasters throughout the country that it's not that way everywhere, but particularly in St. Pete. There's definitely a lack of diversity, and um, and there's a lot of great coffee roasters and shops, but there's a lack of diversity. So, um, originally it was a little, it was a little, uh, I don't know what like kind of word to say, but it was a little tough to kind of figure out how we were going to position ourselves in that space and if we were going to be accepted in that space um, and, and be afforded some of the same opportunities because you know we don't look like everyone else, and and sometimes that can cause a little bit of hesitancy in people. But it was uh, a really surprising and rewarding experience because I think aside from us being twins, us bringing that diversity to it also afforded us a lot more public attention. Um, very shortly after we went to markets, um, Buzz traveled and we got picked up by some local publications. And, and so I felt like a lot of that did have to do with the fact that we weren't a typical new coffee shop, new roaster and on the scene. So um, it was a, you know, it was a, it was a good trade off. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I know, and maybe this is an assumption that you all still have your nine to five. So you're doing your nine to five and you're building your business at the same time. Um, and I know that there's a lot of entrepreneurs that are maybe still in that space. Um, David, how do you feel like, and let's go with the idea of how does that present difficulty, but then how does that present opportunity for you? Um, so I would say the most obvious way that it presents opportunity is it provides the, the funding yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to invest in, in, in a thing that you believe in, um, you know, in some stability. And, you know, like I said earlier, I'm a family man too, so I have responsibilities. However, at the same time, I think it's, you know, for me, it's definitely, um, this has always been, you know, a passion of mine. So I've always wanted to be a business owner. Um, and so it's fulfilling that need. It's providing a creative outlet, you know, outside of uh, my nine to five um, to, to get to, you know, exercise, you know, that desire. And, you know, I think the, the, the thing I would say is important is that you, you know, if you, if you truly want something, you're going to make it happen. And so there's a lot of sacrifice through it. It's no different than someone trying to, you know, work a job and go to school full time or have a family and do another thing. Um, so, you know, you make the trade offs that make sense um, and you, you give up, you know, this is my fun. So like if this wasn't a passion, this wasn't fun. And, you know, I would never have fun, basically. So I'm yeah. giving some of that to do this. And, you know, so it's, it's, it's very rewarding when you see the thing growing up, when you plant the seed and you start to see the leaves budding. So, yeah. Um, working with family, um, how is that for both of you? How is it working with each other? <laughs> Dwayne, I'll let you answer that. <laughs> um, so it's definitely 
it's definitely a plus in the side of, you know, there's a, there's a bond and there's trust. There's a trust in our partnership that is probably deeper and more connected than any two strangers, colleagues, you know, school friends, best friends even coming together um, because we're family. So at the end of the day, um, I, I can close my eyes on a lot of things and know without a doubt he has my back and vice versa. Um, we've, we've been fortunate because we're twins and we grew up really close to be, to kind of have those nuances and challenges all our life. So the challenges go without being said, they're what we deal with on a daily basis. We, we fight like brothers um, as much as we get along. So, mm -hmm. uh, but we're always, we've always been a vessel for pushing each other, which is good. So in this business, um, that's what we try to do. Like, and it's, it's great to have someone to enter into this because I think I'd be of the same mindset if it was just me. And I, I know it's it's been scary, you know, trying to get out there together. So going out there alone is even scarier and more so connecting with someone you don't even know is even scarier. So it's definitely the pros of weighing the cons. Yeah, I love that. So um, I'm going to have you both answer this, but from the standpoint of hog batch, um, I just want you to address it in three different areas. If we're talking like long term, like let's say five years. So hog batch as a business, what are you wanting from that in five years? Just from a business standpoint, what are you wanting from hog batch from a community standpoint? And then what are you wanting from hog batch as far as what it's doing for you personally as an entrepreneur? So those three, what are you seeing for those three sections underneath the umbrella of hog batch? Yeah. So as a business, I would say we want to, we want hog batch to, you know, be synonymous with, you know, a, a very prevalent and sort of leading business in this area um, and not in a way of just not from a, a capital standpoint, but more from, you know, what what type of impact we're making and the quality that we're providing. Um, you know, a, a big part of our focus from a coffee standpoint is, you know, connecting people with um, home, home brewing from a home brewing perspective with, you know, great coffee, obviously, but also like education and tips and techniques and other things. And so that's an, a way to impact people differently than what we have currently in St. Pete. And, you know, and there, there's a, a bunch of other stuff we want to do uh, to grow our business beyond what it is. And I'll also say on the side, like coffee, create, inspire. There's a big focus, like coffee is a, a vehicle but there's a broad stroke of things that we, we, we intend to do with this um, business and platform around the idea of um, creating things and inspiring people. So um, people are gonna see a lot more stuff come out of us than you know, just coffee. Yeah. Uh, David, what about you? Which one? <laughs> oh, Dwayne, I'm sorry. Okay. It has to happen at least once. Yeah, if it didn't happen <laughs> once. Know, right? As, I mean, like, uh, my sister, me and my sister are 15 months apart, and eventually you just answer to that, so their name. Yeah. It's like, if you, yep. okay, I'll just answer to whatever name you want. <laughs> but Dwayne. So for me, it's more like when I think in terms of five-year plan, I think of some expansion. Um, what we're doing is more of a disruptive model. So it's not your typical, like build a coffee shop and then completely, you know, just multiply those. We want, we're trying to create an experience. So, you know, I see us expanding into more spaces where we can bring together creatives, um, bring together our, you know, platform to inspire people. Also launch this Hogbatch brand a little more nationally where we can plot it in different environments throughout the country where we can plant this whole experimental model and this seed for others. So it's a it's a it's a little bit of it's gonna be a little bit of a more innovative strategy to get to. Um, but we are definitely trying to learn from everything that's been going on with the COVID and everything that the coffee model probably needed some adjustments a while ago. So we're trying to take notes and and kind of alter our plan for the future that way too. So yeah, when you all quit in your nine to fives. <laughs> when do we quit? <laughs> do y'all have a time frame or is it just not just, really? Yeah. We, we both like our jobs, um, our, our day jobs, um, our Bruce Wayne's as I like to call them. Yeah. Um, and this is our this is our Batman. And so we, you know, we I you know, I, I very much feel like I'm still growing in that environment and contributing and like and, and obviously there's a, a 
stability factor. And what we, you know, what our approach the whole way through uh, from the beginning has been very incremental. Um, so we, you know, we stepped in cottage law, we tested into commercial, we're testing into a space, and you know, we'll continue to, you know, work with other people too to augment what time we can attribute to that until this grows into a thing that can no longer be contained. And that would be the moment in which we would have to leave our nine to five. <laughs> yeah. So you're saying until it can replace plus be more. Yes. This, I totally get it. And that's, that's, the world leads us in a bigger way. When we when that calling comes, that's when it's time. I'm yeah. Sure. That's a, and that's a quality statement because a lot of people are um, quick to quit the nine to five. You know, it's the idea of if you're working a nine to five, you don't believe in your dream. But if you're working on a nine to five, you believe in that you have to pay your rent and you have to, you know, put food on the table. Um, I, I do want to ask um, just two more questions. So, um, when you are going on the entrepreneur journey and um, also working a nine to five and David, you have a family and Dwayne, that doesn't discount that you're not busy, but um, you know, you have like a lot of responsibilities that can sometimes feel overwhelming. What pushes you through the, is this worth it mindset? If you've had that and maybe you haven't, but in the journey of building a business, um, what pushes you through the frustrations or the working overtime or being at, you know, markets and trade shows for hours and maybe not doing as well? What's the thing that continues to fuel you and keep you going? So I would say two things for me. Um, definitely my biggest why that has kind of brought back my early childhood um, ambition is my son. And, you know, knowing that I'm going to impart in him this uh, sense of anything is possible, like I used to believe, uh, and it's coming back. And so uh -huh. I have to live it. Like, you got to walk that talk. And so when, I'm, when, it, when, it's, when there's a struggle or a challenge or, you know, there's definitely moments of burnout, definitely moments of question, you know, you know, puddles of doubt. And, and, we, and, and those are the moments where I just have to remember that I'm do this is bigger than me. If, it's not, if it wasn't bigger than me, I'd quit every day. Um, and then the, the second thing that's more tangible is some of the feedback we get. We've really got some, you know, some heartfelt, um, uh, positive feedback from, you know, the, our customers and, you know, different partners and people we, we've worked with that's really touched us in a big way and, and sort of lit that fire of, okay, yeah, this is a thing. Like we really, you know, this is a thing and, and people see in you what you don't see in yourself sometimes. And that really goes a long way. I'll let yeah. you touch on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't still love everything. No, you said it. It's definitely the, the the journey. I try to, whenever I get burned out or that doubt starts to kick in, or I feel like, you know, what am I doing? I could, you know, I, I have a job already. I could, because those moments come. I'm like, I, I have a job already. I don't really need this. Um, then I, I focus on the fact of, you know, look at what I'm building. I look at the, the, the roadmap and I look at the, the steers that we've been developing and, I just girl in on the journey and I stop focusing on the destination and like the thing, the results that we want to get. Um, because that's the part that you got to love in order to make those sacrifices. And it really, it just ground, it keeps me grounded. I love the hustle. Like I'm not a person who can sit around and I've never been that way. I'm all, I've always been busy. I've always been involved in a bunch of things. Now I'm just building something that's mine, which is awesome. Um, and then there's definitely the idea of the, the feedback like i feel like people need us i feel like we're i don't want to say creating history but we're creating change just by breaking into this space because i love coffee so much and um i've been to so many shops around throughout the country let alone in st pete and not seeing enough diversity within them you know just as a patron let alone knowing that there's you know now we're starting to see like we're starting to connect and learn all these, you know, black coffee shop owners, roasters and things like that. I think it's really great to have that um, differentiation of thought and, you know, that diversity. So like, I feel like, you know, the accountability is there. Like we, you know, people want this disruptive product we're bringing and then they, they want to see this, they want to see us, you know, like where we are the brand. So yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Um, so, one more question based on the um, kind of the slogan of what you guys do, coffee, create and inspire. Um, I want you to teach us for a minute. So I want you to think of somebody watching who is a hopeful creator or they know that they have something inside of them that's bigger than themselves and a vision. 
but they don't know where to start or they're scared or um, the nine to five feels really good, but yet they know that they have something more to offer the world. Um, what would be your um, word of encouragement or piece of advice that you can give them on how to move forward with that? Um, I'd say be, uh, don't be afraid to fail um, because, you know, it sounds hokey to say that success comes from failure, but it truly does. And, you know, if we're being transparent here, this isn't the first business that me and my brother have started. <laughs> we've started several um, since college. Um, we've always had something going on as a side hustle. Um, it's just that fact that we can't not be fueling into that passion. I know there's a lot of people out there that feel that way, but you know, rather than thinking the nine to five is holding me back or I feel trapped because I need the stability, think of what the nine to five is actually allowing and affording you to do because there's a lot, I, you know, I, get, I commend the people out there who don't have the nine to five, who literally get out of school or, or, or you know, just kind of making it and then they, they go out and get a loan and start something out of nowhere and just put all their dreams on there. Like, you know, having that nine to five has something grounded. You've obviously acquired skills you can go back to. So don't ever be afraid to go forward because going back is easy. So yeah, this, you know, yeah, yeah. I, would, I would add coming off of the idea of that failure. I think there's a, there's, you have to have a healthy balance. I, I liken it to uh, like retirement, that your retirement approach, how much do you invest in tomorrow versus how much do you enjoy today? And I, I would say, like, when you're thinking about starting a thing or investing in your dream, starting a business, you if you if you find that your failure is coming from not having enough of the knowledge and skill, then you need to invest more in the knowledge. Don't discount knowledge and skill. If you find that your failure is coming from not being willing to take the risks and, and be a doer, then you need to take more risks and do more. Um, and so I think you just have to find where you are on that scale. And if you have business partners, I would definitely, if you get to pick, you would choose someone who complements that obviously. But, um, and then as far as like prototyping, one of the things we found, if you're a maker, and this is very specific, um, a maker of things or a creator of things that you're looking to get customer feedback on, the biggest reason why we, we started going to markets was we were, you know, the thought process came from the, the idea that that's a, um, a, a great vehicle for you, some user feedback. That was going to be our, our um, an easy and quick way to get you know real feedback from customers on if our product was any good. Um, and, and I think the, what we found was the, the, there were a lot of there are a lot of um, big and small businesses that participate in those markets, and there's like no barrier of in entry. You know, to say like you're never too early in your idea to, to show up there. So it's a great way to to like get a get a good read on something yeah i love that how many businesses did were failed that you guys started since Dwayne just brought it up i'm intrigued and you know and, how you define and yeah i wouldn't even say, <laughs> i wouldn't even say that they failed and so much and as we outgrew them um uh -huh. one of our last business adventures which has never really died um is uh we were doing fashion so yeah. we love fashion and we love creativity. So we were doing custom fashion. Um, and that's why like these shirts we made and, you know, we, we still infuse it and we, we were doing side orders. It just, we got invested in other things. So we would always kind of go away. Um, and I think we never took the, the, the big step either. So going yeah. back to the idea of like, we had, we had some yeah. equipment, we had the, the wherewithal, but we, we weren't willing to, go all in you know and it was a point in life you know i would say for myself we were getting around that time where that child was dying in me and you know life was taking over and so um we didn't we, we didn't have we didn't take the, the the big risks or the big steps to, to bring that thing forward and that's why this time around you're seeing that so like it's a little bit of you know self-reflection and, <laughs> and adjustment you know so yeah I love that. Okay, so um, let's talk products. So I'm sure that everyone that's watching is very intrigued by your experimental coffee and how can they um, how can they order? Where can they find you guys? Both um, from a business standpoint and if you want to provide your personal personal connections as well, how can they find you and your products? Definitely. So um, as far as connecting with us, uh, we're most prominent on Instagram at hogbatch h o g g batch. I'm sure it's somewhere. I'm going to attach everything you're saying. I, it's right there. It's, it's like floating when I 
<laughs> so, you can find us on Instagram. We're most active there and Facebook as well. Um, and then online at hogbatch.com is where our order you can order online our whole, whole bean coffees. Um, our motto is every bureau release is different and we roast the small batches. So, you know, we, we, we kind of keep it to a small batch so that we can kind of perfect it and then create variety off of that. So try to keep things fresh and exciting with it. Um, as far as uh, outside of all, like all, offline, we're also in the process, like you said, of opening up our retail location. Um, and there'll be more details on that via our Instagram as well. So follow us, uh, subscribe, and uh, check us out. Awesome. Dwayne and David, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for sharing your wisdom, for your story. Thank you for what you guys are doing within the community. Um, and as always, I always encourage my listeners to um, and watchers to contact, contact the people that we interview, Get um, start looking at their stuff, order a bag of experimental coffee. It's awesome. I had my own coffee. That's how I met you guys at a, um, an outdoor market. But um, definitely connect with them and... Um, Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Hog Batch Coffee. Thank you, Andy. Thank you.